So I think it's so interesting that you're doing all this. Is this the second film that you've done, Torben? Or remind me, has there have there been a lot of, a lot of film? Because last time I heard you were doing all the stage work. Yeah, that's that's how I started when I when I came back from New York. I mean, I came back and um, I just I was so so focused on, on on everything, and I was lucky enough to get into um, into acting on stage and theater really quickly, and um, learned a lot there. I mean, being on stage on, on big stages, especially, is uh, yeah, it was frightening in the beginning. Um, but I learned a lot because I played so many different roles and had to push myself really hard because if you get up in the morning and um, you do rehearsals till five, six in the afternoon, then you go on stage to play a completely different play, go back home, um, memorize for the next day, for the next rehearsal, and that's seven days a week. But you learn what it means to actually work. I mean, it's not... It's not always fun, but if as soon as you get on stage, um, you just know what you do it for. Tell us about the challenges. Um, well, the challenges, like everybody knows, it's not all only about um, talent and and what and and looks, and it's it's a lot about who you know and who you already worked with and um, what they actually believe you you're capable of. I mean, um, it's it's something everybody keeps saying. It's like, yeah, I wish somebody would just give me the chance to prove how good I am. But unfortunately, a lot of people say then, if it happens, oh, now I wasn't prepared. And that's one of the, I think, most important things just um, for everybody out there is just be ready if you get the chance. You won't get many, but you have to be ready. And you have to work. You have to work hard every day. And it took me about four or five years to really get into it and to really have my name out there and to find a good agency who now does the work for me, which is another huge step and helps a lot because all of a sudden people start asking for me in America and all over Europe and um, finally I start making money with it, which I haven't for four or five years. Tell me what you remember best about the training? What, what, what do you remember best? What was the hardest? Mm, the hardest was um, for the first couple of weeks um, to let my guards down. I remember myself just bawling because I wanted it so much but I had this problem and I just couldn't do it and you just found the right words to, to push me, to push me without making me scared of it. And that was one moment that I'll never forget. And the most amazing moment for me was um, when the emotional prep worked for the first time. When I sat down and I told you, it's not working, When you just t you told me, sit down and do your job. And I just started writing the letter to my son and it just started happening all of a sudden. And that's the moment I, I keep telling everybody about it. It was so beautiful to, to just realize um, what you're capable of if you just have the right training and the right right direction. Because I have the strong foundation of Meisner technique, and I just know every second nothing can happen to me. Whatever people throw at me, um, the director, the producer, whatever, I just know what I'm capable of, and I can adapt, and I can. I'm, I'm not the kind of actor. Um, who tells the director, well, but, but I don't feel it right now. There's a huge difference between um, um, being real and being in the moment um, and being too arrogant to accept what the director wants from you and adapt your own prep work. Speak a little bit more to me about that, Torben, because I have a couple of students who've been in touch with me lately who are on jobs right now and struggling with that relationship between what the director's expectations are and trying to, you know, find their organic way to fulfill those expectations. Well, what I do is I try to talk as much as possible to the director before we start shooting, before I go into the to, to the to the work um, on the character, because if I go the wrong way, uh, eight weeks of work are just for nothing. 
and then I stand on set and the director doesn't like what I'm doing, that's just, it's not fun. So I try to talk to them in, in advance as much as I can and to, to be on the same page and then start the real work, like go into the character and where does he come from and try to make the same experiences like when I played a stripper. There's no way around it, you have to go to a strip club and just make that experience on stage. And then, um, of course, you, you have to change things while you're shooting. But that's the beautiful thing about Meisner techniques, like whatever, you can change. Because if you have your foundation, it's, um, maybe it's good for people to hear, it's, um, even though I'm 100% Meisner, and I love to be truthful all the time, and I just let go and let things happen. Um, editors love me because they say, they keep keep telling me it's like you're so precise, and um, you always know what you're doing. You know you, you you find the light the same way every single every single time, and you move the head the same way every single time. But within those barriers. You can still be truthful all the way and let things happen. But I think that's what, what a lot of people um, don't understand, that they can be truthful within those boundaries that the directors or producers or the, even the script, that's the first boundary. That's the first thing you you have to tell the story the way it's written. Like I remember I had a huge fight with my first director who was my big advisor and I still work with him a lot and we love each other. But I remember myself saying after week but excuse me I just don't feel it um, or another time that's when he freaked out actually and um, said um, told me it's like why aren't you really sad I'm like look I'm crying my tears are falling so like yeah congratulations the second row still sees that we have 25 <laughs> so work through it <laughs> and make it believable so it's just it's, it's always a matter of adapting. When you leave the training, um, you tend to be scared of not being truthful anymore and, and try to hold on so much onto that and because that was the beautiful moments in class. Right. But you can be truthful no matter how loud you are, how different the, your character speaks and compared to what you would do in normal life, you can still be truthful. And that's the beauty about Meissner. You can just you have this foundation, and nothing can happen to you. Nothing. I think that's my biggest advantage when I came back to Germany because I had this huge self confidence, and I was never as scared um, on stage or in front of the camera as I was in class. <laughs> it's like if you you leave the training and nothing can happen to you anymore because you just know that's that's what I learned, and I learned that quite quickly, um, that the foundation I got and the craft is really, really good when you leave the training. You just have to learn to work with other people and, and, and find a way to understand what do they want from me. And um, yeah, if, if, you, if you're professional and you, you put in hard work, people keep working with you over and over and over again, which is what people complain about, so did I for years. Because it's hard to get into it. But, yeah, but I understand. There's so many people out there who just don't know what they're doing. Um, that you stick to the same group of people all the time. If you, if you like them, if you like their work ethic. Which is one of the most important things. Many actors show up on stage or um, in front of the camera. They don't know their lines. I hate it. it freaks me out. <laughs> because it's just unprofessional. And that's um, another thing that I love about Meissner, or uh, by rote. It's still the foundation of good acting for me every single day. By rote memorization. It's just, it's the best thing ever. <laughs>